Hey everybody, welcome back to Life Under Deborah's Palm where today we're going to begin taking an in-depth look at the gifts. of Holy Spirit and we're going to begin with the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge not only what they are but what they are not this time what we're going to do is we're going to take a a look at the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, in the last video or the last blog, whichever it is that you took a look at, I listed the general list, listing of the list, that Paul gave in 1 Corinthians 12. Now I'm going to break these things down a little bit and go more in depth with them. And the first ones I'm going to start with, I'm going to do the first two on the list, and that is the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. And just a quick recap on them. I know if you looked at the blog and the last video, I said message because it was a concordance issue with NIV, but we're going to just call it word because the message means word. And so the word of knowledge comes from the Greek word gnosos, and it just means like a general knowledge and an understanding. The word wisdom comes from the Greek word sophia and sophos, and that means like you're a wise expert. You're skilled at something. So that's the difference, and they really do kind of connect together, and I personally think that these two gifts really work together with a lot of other giftings, especially the gift of teaching. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to back up to the Old Testament because you know what I tell you about that. You got to understand that the Old Testament and the New Testament are not a division in the book. I think Christianity has really just divided it and made it like two separate things. And really it's all one story. So let's go back to the Old Testament and take a look at what Moses went through. This is in Exodus 25 through 30. It's five, pa five, five pages, five chapters long, understandably. What happens is God releases all this knowledge to Moses and he says, here's what you're going to do. Here's the, the garments you're going to make for Aaron and his sons. They were the priests and they were very specific. The colors and the stones and the turban and everything they were going to do. Then he said, here's how you're going to make the tabernacle. Now, the tabernacle was a precursor to the temple. At this point in time, the Israelites were mobile and they were taking this tabernacle with them. So it was, you know, it was kind of a nomadic lifestyle for a while. So what they were going to build was going to be folded up, packed up, moved with them every time they moved, set back up. But God gives Moses this, these long instructions for everything, um, everything that needs to be made, gold lamp stands, the curtains to the, the temples, the rings that are going to be on there that hold the curtains up, along with all the stuff they're going to use for an altar, a basin, the, um, what do they call it? The, I guess you sweep the ashes with it. All of those things were very, very specific instructions. So God gave Moses the knowledge. Now I'm going to read to you just a little bit. And this is out of Exodus 31, one through six. While Moses got the knowledge, he did not have the skill or if he did, it didn't say that he did. God told him who he was going to use to build this. And so he, this is what is written. It says, then the Lord said to Moses, see, I have chosen Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the spirit of God, right? Spirit of God, gift of Holy Spirit before it was released at Pentecost. Um, so it says, I have filled him with the spirit of God, with wisdom, with understanding, with knowledge, and with all kinds of skills to make artistic designs for work in gold, silver, and bronze, to cut and set stones, to work in wood, and to engage in all kinds of crafts. Moreover, I have appointed, oh, 
Aholiab, son of Asamak of the tribe of Dan, to help him. Also, I have given ability to all the skilled workers to make everything I have commanded you. So Moses had the knowledge. These guys had the wisdom. God had just upped their skill level and probably their ability to really see how these things were expected to be made the way that God had had purposed them. So now let's skip into the New Testament and the gift of the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. This is probably the only place that I have seen could maybe it exists somewhere else. I didn't see it where the Bible actually calls it a word of wisdom. Paul calls it that. But normally it, it really isn't referred to by the name of the gift. It just works with other giftings and it, and it doesn't necessarily get pointed out like, hey, there's the word of wisdom. So this is the one place that we see that Paul actually uses the name of the gifting. And he is explaining it in 1 Corinthians 2, 6 through 8. And he says, we do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. No, we declare God's wisdom, a mystery that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they did, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So he is saying, I'm giving a message of wisdom that I received from the Lord. And that message in this context was for the mature, for people who had a certain baseline understanding so that they could understand and grow and mature more in what Paul was explaining to them. And Paul does go on to say that what he has gotten, he certainly has not gotten on his own understanding. And it continues and says, the spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. What we have received is not the spirit of this world, but the spirit who is from God so that we may understand what God has freely given us. This is what, what we speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in words taught by the spirit explaining spiritual realities and spirit taught words. So right there, he is telling you, I'm giving you a, a message of wisdom or a word of wisdom. So this is going to bring me to my final point of what words of knowledge and words of wisdom are not, not, and this, depending on where you're at, may bother you, but in charismatic and Pentecostal circles, they will use this comment. You will hear people say, I have a word for you, or I have a word talking about the gift of prophecy. They're talking about something that the, the Lord has given them that they couldn't have known and they want to release that. That is different than the word of knowledge or the word of wisdom. I think that it's not an intentional thing. Like I don't think anybody's there to screw up the giftings. I think that when we hear them say, oh, I have a word, we just our brain automatically connects it with a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom when actually that really isn't what it is. So I'm just pointing that out. So when you hear that, you know, that's just common sort of Christianese and it's, it's got itself mixed up a little bit. Like I said, I don't think people are out there trying to mess around. I think our brains just automatically connect it with that but it technically is not the same gift. A gift of prophecy is another story for another day. Probably a couple more weeks down the line. I'm not sure where it is on the gift list, but I know next will be the gift of faith. So stay tuned. That will be next week. Until that time, be blessed and have a great day.